Alright, so I know I have not uploaded in like a year, and uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about it. But um, I do want to basically talk about Arch. Um, you guys may have seen a couple of my videos where I'm using Arch Linux. That's you know, totally not like the entire purpose of the channel, but um, I do actually want to talk about why I'm using Arch and what might convince you to potentially try out Arch. So. First off, I'll go into my introduction to Arch Linux from Ubuntu. So I was first slowly getting into Linux around 2020 when I had a kind of iffy, terrible computer. And I kind of knew that like, if you put Linux on it, it could be better optimized and it might actually perform better. And I didn't know anything about Linux at the time, but I didn't know that Ubuntu existed. So I put Ubuntu on the computer and lo and behold, it, it was fun to use. On my gaming PC, I actually started to try experimenting with putting Ubuntu on that. And because gaming at that time, gaming on Linux was just not a thing. And I really had no reason to use Linux at this time. I was using Windows 10, stuff like that. Windows 11 wasn't complete dog shit at that time. I was still kind of okay with using Windows at this point. And you know, as you're learning Linux, you know, I completely destroyed my Windows install. And from then I was just like, I hate Linux. I don't want to use Linux whatsoever. I then was watching a bunch of YouTube and I actually, I, I can't remember the YouTuber that I ran into, but I think it was either Luke Smith or DistroTube. I think it was DistroTube. So basically ended up talking about the Arch install script and I, that was my introduction into Arch. I, my first install was using the Arch install script, which it wasn't, it wasn't good, but it kind of got me to a very basic KDE install and I had so much fun with KDE. I had so much fun taking things apart, customizing it. I was hooked. I was really hooked into KDE. You have no idea. And that's where you start to see the first KDE Linux races sort of go, I think a couple of months in, I started going to BSPWM, but I was still treating Arch as an experiment. I was still treating it as a second operating system. This was with the Arch install script and I was still kind of learning how Linux worked. Um, and I was still able to solve things myself. And I never asked for support. Um, I had friends who were still helping me but I never asked the community for support because I knew kind of what I was doing. Like, okay, I just used the Arch install script. I'm not, I didn't manually install it yet. And then basically uh, quite a few months out, I do my first manual install and I'm like, okay, I know what I'm doing. And then the Arch install, uh, the scripted install uh, end up, ends up breaking after a year. Like the operating system just starts freezing. I'm like, okay, sick. So then I end up doing a manual install of Arch and like, okay, I'm back. I understood what happened. I understood what was going on. Great, cool. And then that ends up breaking due to some unforeseen issue. I was like, okay, you know what? I don't want to touch Arch. I'm done. And then I start using Fedora for about two weeks. And then Fedora was giving me issues and Fedora was being weird. I'm like, you know what? I'm going back to Arch. And I have not left since. <laughs> I have probably reinstalled Arch maybe about two times after that. Um, one time something happened and I just nuked the system, reinstalled it, but kept all my files and it was like nothing happened and it was great. And yeah, so I've been on Arch for about three years at this point, maybe four, but I've been using Arch for about three. Yeah, no, my time with Arch has been great. I've been able to play a lot of games and most of the things that I have with Arch, like some of the issues are not necessarily due to Arch itself, it's more or less due to me learning more about Linux at the time, and mainly the issues with NVIDIA. Luckily, the issues with NVIDIA has gotten a lot better, like this is in Wayland, and I've just been getting a lot of great performance with Wayland. I've been able to play most of my games, or all the games I wanna play, basically. I really don't feel like I'm making a lot of compromises. I did move from Adobe to open source tools, and we're gonna get into that later. So let's get into why you should specifically use Arch Linux. So you should use Arch specifically if you are technologically savvy, willing to do things yourself, and want to control everything on your system. And you want to start off with a very, very minimal system. So the first thing is, no matter what you do, if you're trying to install vanilla Arch, 
you're going to be using some form of a terminal. You're going to be basically installing this operating system using the terminal and you cannot be scared of the terminal if you're going to start with arch you need to be able to understand that your system is your responsibility you're responsible for everything that you put on it and basically if it breaks it's on you and you got to figure out why that is the maintenance is not terrible it's not as terrible as gentoo gentoo is fun as hell by the way uh i mean no disrespect but gentoo maintenance is it's a lot um arch is not that bad once you get used to it but again it it, it, it kind of it does get to a point and you have to be willing to do things yourself and you do you should be able to ask for help like if you know what's going on and you're running into certain things you should be able to ask for help you should you should not be afraid of the community and there's times that i ask when you know i haven't read the manual but you know so what do i use arch for because people still think that Linux is like, you know, special edge cases. Um, I use Arch Linux for basically everything. I'm using it as a daily driver, obviously, for my desktop. Um, I'm using it for gaming. Arch is perfect for gaming. The a access to the AUR and the fact that SteamOS is based off Arch, it's been very good. Everything's very minimal and uh, my RAM usage is not the best, okay? I mean, I am recording and I do have Steam and Discord in the background, so maybe if I were to close those things, I might get around um, idle two to four gigs, which is not good, okay? I'm still using KDE and I have done like Hyperlin Rices and I'm currently working on a Hyperlin Rice in a VM. So if I, was to, if I were to run this, um, I would, my GP would connect to this VM. I am currently working on a Hyperlin Rice it's slowly working on it and once it gets to where i'm proud of it i will open source it so you guys can take a look and potentially help me bring it even further but um yeah no um virtual machines is also a reason why you should use Linux, by the way <laughs> but um yeah i use it for gaming work school and it performs perfectly uh, i also use arch for servers uh, mainly hosting docker containers and storage so if i were to ssh into my next cloud that's also running arch i basically have next cloud terraria server stuff that is basically contained within docker containers so the advantages of arch arch is a rolling release distribution so this is basically a pro and con of arch um, i'll get into the cons in the next section the advantages of arch being rolling release is that you get packages first so if the kde developers create Plasma 6.4. I'll be getting Plasma 6.4 within like four to five days. Meanwhile, other distributions will have to wait quite a bit to get that release. So the moment that the developers come up with their own stable version or they have a version that, you know, is a release candidate or is good, um, I will be getting it within one to two days. And that is a really good pro of Arch is that you immediately get things fast and immediate let's get let's get a B top up just to just kind of get some visuals going another advantage of arch is the arch user repository so the arch user repository is absolutely insane so if i want to get literally any piece of software i have a higher chance of getting it pretty well from the aur versus other distributions so other distributions have ways of kind of getting close to this like you want to you just add PPAs or uh, repositories to your package manager. Um, OpenSUSE has their own open build service, which I did use, and it was pretty good. Gentoo has overlays, and Gentoo, Gentoo has probably one of the best package managers I've seen. Um, Gentoo overlays are amazing, but using the AUR, and yes, using a helper for the AUR is good, but using the AUR is amazing. Like, I feel like I can get anything I want. The AUR is an amazing tool. The vanilla Arch repositories are quite expensive and they are pretty good, but the AUR just adds on top of that. So I just have to think of what I want. I can install it and it's not even a problem. So let's try to, um, I really don't even know what I want to even like try to install because I kind of just have everything I want. But um, say I want to get a specific fork of Audacity called uh, tenacity i just do n tenacity and okay well that was that was a part of uh if it's sync explicit that means it's already a part of the vanilla repositories but yeah pretty good 
So another advantage of Arch is that Arch will teach you a lot about Linux if you allow it. So if you're using Arch and you just, you know, use Arch install and you don't take the time to learn more about it, um, you're not going to really get a lot from Arch. I mean, you'll, um, you'll be forced to learn it when you have to fix your own issues. And I did use the Arch install script and I did learn a lot kind of going from, you know, top down and then working from the bottom by installing manually and then kind of working back up. What I mean by that is doing Arch install, learning more about KDE, and then kind of going deeper into the system, like, you know, system D, the kernel, et cetera, et cetera. And then going back, reinstalling Arch, doing manual install, and then having to install my own kernel, install my own bootloader, not having to install my own init system because, you know, it already comes with system D, but, um, and just kind of working back up to, you know, playing around with other DEs or other desktop environments. That's something that Arch does teach. Like you, you will be forced to learn more about Linux and how it works. The disadvantages of Arch is, you know, it is rolling release. So one thing I will kind of go into is with Arch being rolling release, you will run into some unstable breakages. So I've had Spectacle break on me. And if I were to update right now, Spectacle most likely will not work. I'm currently, I currently rolled back my entire system to an archive. So I am using slightly data packages. Um, it's rolled back somewhere to like April 20th. And I just kind of have everything locked to that archive. If I were to update, uh, Bluetooth is not going to work the best for me because for some reason an update basically made it to where, oh, hey, I cannot connect my PlayStation 4 controller easily. And luckily, you know, if you have time shift, if you're using BTRFS, it's going to be a lot easier for you to just restore your system back to, you know, when it was working. So I definitely recommend using a snapshot system or something along the lines of that, because that's going to be very, very helpful for you going forward. Usually things do not break often in Arch, luckily. I have not seen too many breakages, but it is rolling release. You will run into them. You will run into issues if you're not careful. And it is really good to have those snapshots. So if I were to open time shifts, these are my snapshots if I really needed to. Because I'm using BTRFS, which is a file system, a custom file system that you can have on Linux, I could just click here, I'm gonna go back into that, I can just restore my system without losing my files back to that state. And because my home directory and my system is separate, my files do not get affected by restoring. And another disadvantage of Arch is if you just want things to work, this is most likely not gonna be the case. I did start to prioritize stability a little bit, hence why I don't really, I'm not really using a tiling window manager. I really like KDE, so I've been using KDE a lot. And I am still working on a tiling window manager right now, again, in a VM. Part of me does want things to just work, but the other part of me does like to tinker and fix things. So that's kind of why, you know, KDE while using Arch is a perfect balance in that regard. Um, that's the best way I can explain it. So yeah, my conclusion. I definitely recommend if you are interested in learning more about Linux, if you're interested in giving Arch a shot, I definitely think you should go in and start to learn more about what that necessarily means. You can learn a lot from Linux if you're using Arch. So I definitely don't recommend using Arch if you're very new to Linux. Um, that is something like when I was going into Arch, I knew a little bit about Linux. Um, I played around with a bunch of Ubuntu based distributions at the time. I even did play around with an Arch based distribution, uh, Garuda at the time. And I think I also used Manjaro a little bit, but most people I know work their way to Arch. They don't just go straight head first into it because Arch is probably going to be your first DIY distribution. If you do decide to go deeper into this hobby, if you're on Arch, your Linux is basically your hobby. At this point, Linux is basically one of your major interests if you're using Arch. If you are new to Linux, I highly would recommend you use something like Linux Mint or Ubuntu. And I don't want to just kind of label them as beginner distributions because we can label them like that. But I'm currently using Linux Mint on my laptop and I love it. I was going to just use Linux Mint just to like have something on there that's not Windows before I get a chance to like, you know, really get into configuring it and maybe doing Gen 2. And now I'm just kind of liking Linux Mint, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to change it. Linux Mint is great, and I really like using it on my laptop. So, but yeah, if you're if you're trying to create a minimalist system, if you're trying to really max out the power in your system, DIY distributions like Arch, Gentoo, and Nix is 
I would highly recommend that because I have definitely pushed the performance of my system while using these minimalist distributions. And another thing, just another thing about generally about Linux, no ads, no nothing, you know, actually sane, uh, start menu, no BS notifications. The, the one kind of quote unquote advertisement I'll get is KDE wanting me to donate to their project. And that's like once a year. And honestly, that's completely fine. I find that to be very wholesome because it's like, you know, they're not making money off of this, you know, just by usage. They are making money off of it by donations. So that's another reason why I do like Linux is because a lot of this is open source. A lot of this is perpetually carried forward by developers. And I do, I, I really do like that mindset. But yeah, no, Arch Linux is great. And I have been very, very glad to be using it for three years. And I hope to continue doing so. I have looked into other alternatives like N2. Uh, fedora and uh, if arch does get really unstable i might jump to fedora or maybe get to uh probably get to honestly if it gets to that point i really like i really like arch i do hope that this continues to work for me well in any case that's it for me thank you for watching